Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Thank you. Hey there. So, that, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I just love building. My name is Glenn Katz. Uh, I've been teaching at Stanford, BIM modeling, and the architecture program there for a number of years. Recently started working for Autodesk. I basically go around from university to university, school to school, helping folks like you. Just work with the tools. That's my job, is to really kind of help you be successful with this. So, we're going to have these workshops. We're going to help you sort of learn what the tools are good for, hopefully get you guided in the right direction about how to apply them appropriately. You're going to find out I'm a really informal, very question and answer driven person so the, to your question the more you sort of bring in stuff with real questions you want solved the more you'll get out of it it's like I, I really respond very well to that as opposed to just making up examples on the fly so so please do and even as we go through all this type of stuff like you got a question you need to know something like pop in and kind of ask it and stuff like that because the important point is that you get out of it what you want to so Today, in principle, what I'm going to do is real quickly kind of look at the whole issue of really how we can go ahead and take uh, mass models, conceptual models, and really just start doing some sort of analysis on them. Doing the types of analysis you could do within a tool like Vasari or Ecotech to start looking at things like wind flow or daylighting. We're especially going to focus on daylighting, but really there's a whole general principle about how you very early on in the process go ahead and get started with taking your earliest idea about what the form could be and start looking at it in terms of how the sun and the shadows are going to work with it, how much solar radiation is hitting the surfaces, how much the daylighting is actually getting inside of it, how the wind flows around it. Because the idea is we really want to be able to move beyond just all those nice charts that have the arrows flying around where we're sort of swagging about what we think is going to happen, but we don't really have a, uh, a simulation basis for that, to really understanding what the hard science is behind that. Okay? And the tools are really making it easy enough that you can go ahead and get started that way. Yeah. So to introduce the topic, I'm going to actually start just working with one of the tools that was really designed to make it very easy at the conceptual level to start playing around with this. It's called Project Vasari. Um, it really is, if you think about conceptual modeling, which is available in Revit, okay, and analysis, which is available in Ecotech, if you took the best of both of those and tried to create a single tool that would have kind of easy modeling analysis features together, that's what Vasari was created to do. So it's kind of, it's a subset of Revit and a subset of Ecotech, but for getting started where you may be, it may be one of the easiest tools to work with just as you get going with all this. So let me just kind of show you real quickly how we can start to work with this, just in the context of like uh, trying to go through and uh, like understand those analysis answers. So for example, when we're working in Vasari, it all starts with the notion of creating masses. And as you're creating masses, it really starts with just drawing very simple forms. So I can do things like, oh, just draw boxes on the floor, which may represent the uh, boundary of your building, something like that. And when it's time to go through and sort of screw those up into third dimension, we can go ahead and pull on up and start to just sort of get some very basic shapes. Now, this sort of shape is very stretchable. We can do all sorts of things to it. This is kind of a very boring shape right now. But if we wanted to, we can start, oh, giving it more of a roof sloping that out, whatever it is we want to do to go ahead and give it some very basic shape. But it all starts with just sort of creating simple masses. And you could do that within this environment, you could do that within SketchUp, whatever tool you want to. If you bring me a Rhino model or a SketchUp model, I'll show you how to make, how to bring it in here and allow us to start working with it. Okay, so once you go through and just start creating your simple masses, and I'll stick with this very simple mass for the purpose of our example right now. Okay, this does go ahead and have the notion of where it is located on the Earth and what its orientation is relative to north steep, north steep north, east, west, and south. Okay, that's going to be really important. We're going to learn that we're going to, it's going to be very critical to always put our buildings in the right location on the earth because where the sun is, the latitude and the longitude is very sensitive. As well as when we start doing anything involving climate, having an accurate weather and climate profile, you know, it really varies. The type of problem you're solving for a marketplace in India is very different from the type of problem you're solving for something located here in Newark. Okay, about whether heat's flowing in or out or just really the issues that you're most concerned with. So we can go ahead and locate it in there. What I'm going to show you just real quickly though is even with this very, very simple mass that you can start to do some very basic things with it. You know, under the Analyze tab, there's some things like, there's this whole issue of basically solar radiation and understanding how much radiation is hitting each of those surfaces. That's important to you in terms of thinking about how much heat's going to be radiating through those surfaces, thinking about where the apt uh, positions are for solar panels, uh, just thinking about anything that involves the radiation. And to do solar radiation, you can do things like choose the solar radiation tool, choose the tool of the surfaces that we're interested in sort of seeing, the radiation on. Let me go ahead and close that on up. It'll go through and, oh, it's not getting the weather data. That's because I'm not hooked into your network right now. Let's see how far it actually goes. 
It's not going to let me do it in here. Well, scrap that piece of the example. But what it's going to basically do when I do get hooked into your network, it's going to show us that on each of the different surfaces, kind of really how many BTUs per square foot per hour, like each of those different surfaces are collecting. And that's actually pretty easy to work with. When you're working with little masses like this, a very sort of uh, like nice way of working with them at a very high level is to start to think about them just in sort of a very simple way. There's this notion of for every different building, we could model all the detailed surface articulation and the window glazing and the white shelves and things like that. But at a very high level, when you're doing sort of conceptual analysis, it really does come down to the quality of the different surfaces, what the thermal properties of the surfaces are, what the light conducting pro properties of the surfaces are, and what the ratio is of the glazing to the solid areas and stuff like that. And within tools like this, you can go through and just start to adjust those. So for example, if we say that we want to have a surface that is a 60% glazing all over, the, or all over the entire building, we can go through and do something like that. Let me go ahead and uh, where do I want to do? Let me say enable the energy model. I got that one turned on there. Hang on there. Say OK to that. I want it to show me those things, but it looks like it's going to keep on fighting with me. Hang on. It's going to go through and basically break up the model a little bit now. See if I can actually, this whole thing of not getting on your internet is actually really kind of throwing me in terms of being able to do things, but that's okay. Do we have... Oh. Oh, you have a hardware connection? I might have a really, yeah. I might oh, if you do, that's fantastic. I should remember to bring a cable like that. This is a very cheap cable for her. If it works, it'll work. If not, that's OK. We'll kind of keep on going with some other stuff. I guess that's one of the kind of principles that sort of we need to be aware of these days. Now and now, more and more of the analysis tools are basically living in the cloud now. Because yeah, rather than having everything sort of located on your machine and having to load the software there, we actually sort of put a lot of services up there. The disad of that, of course, is that you have, uh, it's like on the side. You need to be, have internet connectivity. So you're going to find that like uh, having that is a really premium thing at all times. Let's see. Okay, it's doing a little spinning. It looks like it's trying. Looks like it has internet access there. This might actually be good. Yay. Okay, let me just log in. Yeah. So it's just sort of rule of thumb. You can never type your password accurately when people are looking at you in a room. See, I told you. <laughs> Try again. Still not. Now I'm really going to be concerned about what I'm doing wrong. No, got it that time. It says caps and smalls, all that type of stuff. You got to remember what those are. Okay, let me go ahead and just run this through. This is sort of a very simplified version. If I said that every surface in that building basically had, uh, what did I said, 60% glazing or something like that, that's how it would actually start, start looking at the building. What will happen is we can send that stuff off immediately, almost immediately, get some sort of like uh, analysis of what the building is. See if I can find it out there. It's kind of floating around out on the cloud. There it is. It looks like it's still analyzing. I'll let it just kind of keep on chugging there for a second. As it's doing that, let me go back into the daylighting thing again. So here we are. Let me go to the solar analysis. I'll say solar radiation. Let me show the mass form. Okay, back over here. Solar radiation, it really just looks something like this. We can go through and choose the specific surfaces we want to see. Let me go ahead and close that up. And why is it not showing me anything there? You know, this is just determined to like uh, sort of make me a liar today in terms of all these things. Hang on, let's try that again. There we go. 
So we start to sort of have some sense of really where the highest levels of radiation are, where they're not. It's all scaled. We can go ahead and actually measure this, get data files out to actually sort of see. But we can start to see that at the spring equinox, or a cumulative value if we're sort of more interested in how we're collecting energy over time, really what the different surfaces are. And this starts to give us some information about where the hot side's hot and the cool side's cool and where uh, solar panels may be useful to go ahead and apply. But you can do this very quickly to kind of start to understand your building and get some very quick results. Let me come back over here on the conceptual energy side. There it is. You can see that just, you know, after designing, defining a building ever so briefly in terms of what's going on, we have to think about its square footage, its wall area. We can get to things like what the energy use intensity is, which is a really good overall metric for understanding is how much energy you were using per square foot for the building. It's all very dependent on the use of the building, the hours of operation, things like that. But the idea with all these tools is that what we're trying to do is just get some feedback that's going to guide our design. It's going to give you some number. It'll always go through and tell you some number that, oh, this building is going to use $619,004 in energy over the life of the building. And the odds of that happening is, yes, more likely you're going to win the Nobel Prize next year. Okay. It's not going to be that number. But it is very good at letting you go ahead and take and compare several different strategies for what if I orient the building this way? What if I orient the building that way? What if I change the glazing? What if I go through and start putting sunshades on a specific side of the building and compare those different things? So for example, just real quickly, in this building, for example, if I went through and said, hey, this is not looking really great, what would happen if I actually started putting sunshades or some shelves around the building? I could do things like and either do it for all the sides or do it just on a single side. Say that, oh, we're going to go through and put a shade that's four foot uh, deep all around the building. Say OK, and then rerun that analysis and kind of compare the results. So the idea is really all about just sort of getting very quick feedback in terms of what's going on. Now, that's on the energy analysis side. Let's talk about daylighting and shadow and things like that. Because there's a number of tools built right into here, as well as built into Ecotech and Revit. It's all the same tools. There's this whole notion of shadows and a solar heat on and really understanding what's happening with those shadows. And you can, in any of these tools, go ahead and turn on shadows. Let me just kind of turn them on. That wasn't very exciting in terms of what's happening there. But you can sort of see the shadows behind the building over on this side now. Let me go ahead and turn on the heliodon, or the sun path, as they call it here, and we can actually start seeing a little bit more about how this works. So the idea is, and this is for Boston, Massachusetts, you all have a very different sort of location with latitude and longitude for your project site, but we can go ahead and just drag the sun in the sky and start to understand just really how the shadows are, not only at different sort of times of day, but we can also go ahead and change that from, oh, the equinox, sort of where we are right now, is not nearly as interesting as, for example, if you go to one of the extremes. Now why is that? 1220, that's okay. Let me orbit that around a little bit. I'm expecting to see the long, oh there they are, they're so long I'm not even seeing them, that's what's happening. The shadows are actually quite, quite far. There they are right there. I see, we're not sort of seeing it very well there. But you can start to see the shadow of the building over there when it's in the wintertime, and you have these very long shadows versus if I'm up in the summertime, you'll start to see I start having very sh shallow shadows that are actually staying very close to the building. And this starts having a very big effect on our designs. A lot of what we do with design now is really think about how other buildings are casting shadows on us and how we in turn are casting shadows on other buildings. So that gets to be sort of very important stuff. There's a fantastic tool built right into this for doing wind flow analysis. I won't show you that now. Maybe we can show you that, like even in the workshop. But that's also, there's a basic little wind tunnel in here that lets you start to see for if you have a whole complex of buildings that are open air, how air is going to flow through and between the buildings, which may, vary, may be very important to you if you're doing some sort of natural convective kind of cooling and you want to make sure that there are no dead spots and everything is well ventilated. Okay, But really where this all goes is, if we want to start to understand it in even more detail, we can get sort of very quick feedback out of tools like Vasari. But when you want to go through and do things in more detail, you have a very easy path for taking it forward into a tool like Ecotect. Okay, so when it comes to actually doing things like daylighting analysis and really doing the detail type of analysis we'd like to do, really understanding the daylighting levels in the building or how light is reflecting off different surfaces, you know, Ecotect really is the gold standard for doing that. So let me show you how that works just really briefly. Perfect.
Okay, what you got to do is, just from within here, I'll just do an export. I'm going to say export my GBXML file. That's just a format for transferring. I'm going to say NGIT daylight. Save that away. Pop it over to Ecotect instead, and I'm looking at a big blank modeling environment where I could start drawing from scratch, but you can go ahead and do this, where you import the geometry that you've already defined somewhere else. What I want to do is, hang on, not geometry, wrong dialogue there. Import the model. I'm going to go out and get that GBXML file, the one I just created over in the other thing. Let me go out to my documents. My documents, NGIT. Come back over here. Let me just import that. There's a lot of stuff going on here. This is sort of a very simple surface model of what's going on. If I go through and switch it to the visualized tab, that might sort of give you a better sense of what's happening. There is sort of the basic spaces and what's going on. Oh, that's looking a little bit close. Let me back out instead. Okay, but here's the idea with a space like this. If we'd like to go through and understand a space like this, there's a couple of main things we might want to do with daylighting. One is what I'll call relatively qualitative. And if we do something qualitative, what we could do is, let me go through and I'll do something like, oh, for example, draw a light shelf on the building. Okay, there's a little like light shelf in there. Let me go back to visualize again. Yeah, if I want to sort of see what the effect of not only shading is, but maybe bouncing sunlight off that in terms of how far it actually takes it back into the building, you can do things like this. We can go through and look at, let me go to the sun tab and say, go ahead and show me the solar rays. Okay, it wants me to uh, choose something as a solar reflector. I can do something like, for example, oh, Hang on. Choose that roof surface or something like that. Actually, what I'm going to do is actually just choose that. I'll get to the punchline. If I can get to it. There he is. That's the surface I want is the solar reflector. What I'm going to do is say basically tag that thing as a solar reflector. Okay, when I do that and I say show, show solar rays, You'll see that I can start to actually sort of see what the effect is. Let me go ahead and kind of spread them out a little bit further so you can actually see a little bit better what's going on. Okay, of the solar rays hitting. That's with one bounce, that's not going very far. Let me go ahead and bounce it twice. Okay, that's bouncing it into the building. Let me bounce it a third time. Okay, actually what's happening here, it's hitting an interior wall and bouncing back a little bit further. But what we're going to learn to do in the workshop is that we can actually go through and start really starting to look at the solar rays. Okay, and start to understand how they bounce off the surfaces. If we say it's a light shelf, what happens? You're going to find out, and so it's a surprising thing for me, the incident angle is all critical in terms of what's going on here. So when we actually do things like create sloped ceilings and stuff like that, in a weird way it works against us. Because what happens is the light doesn't bounce into the building, it sort of bounces back towards the front surface. So there's a lot of interesting things we can play around with ceilings and different things to kind of make that happen. The last kind of tool I want to kind of show you about that just going to give you a sense of where this is going with daylighting is called the data grid. And let me explain what that's all about. The data grid is really all about making this quantitative as opposed to just qualitative. So what I can do is I can go through and choose a surface, for example, that surface right there. And what I'm going to do is, oh, let me go ahead and where is the thing? Data grid management. Show, no, no, I'm going to fit to grid. Auto fit grid objects. There it is. Let me fit it within there, the selected objects, that's going to be fine. I'm going to put a little data grid in there. And once I go through and put that data grid in there and zoom on in, okay, this just won't be very interesting because there's a huge window in front of there, but it'll sort of give you an idea of what's going on. We can say that we would like to go through and analyze the lighting levels. Let me perform the calculation. I'm just going to skip through the wizard for right now which will let us set all sorts of things about the amount of daylighting in the sky that we want to consider. It'll go through and actually figure out for us, okay, just really 
what the, either the daylighting level or the daylighting factor is that's available at each of those different locations. So what we can actually do is start putting together a very detailed map where we start to see relative to the windows of the surfaces in there, where is the drop off? How far back does the light penetrate and how bright is it? Like right now, I'm currently seeing that this space over here is around 12% daylighting factor. Okay, when you start getting back over into the corner, it's around 2 or 4%. It's very, very bright, 22% here in front of the window. And what we'll learn to do is actually think about this very systematically in terms of you want to get daylight back into the building, but you don't want to have it be so bright that you feel like you're sitting under a very intense interrogator's lamp to the point where it's totally uncomfortable to be in front of there too. So it's basically using tools like this, we'll be able to go through and either show values, show specific values, you know, put, go through and put contours in there, okay, and very quickly go through and figure out which parts of the space actually are meeting different daylighting targets that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so that's kind of it in terms of the big overview about where this is going. It's just really the important point I hope I you know, drove home quickly, besides all the fumbling around with the software, is that if you do have a basic model and we can start with a very simple conceptual model, we'd start getting some very interesting results about the solar radiation, the amount of daylighting hitting in there, how bad daylight is reflecting into the spaces, uh, the energy use, there's a lot of things we can get out of it. And really, I think the point is on these Wednesday workshops to go ahead and working with some real models that you guys are working with to start exploring that in some more detail and show you how you can use these tools. Okay, that's the gist of it. Okay? Great. Okay, thank you. I think that was a good follow-up to um, last semester when we introduced Vasari and solar radiation. We covered that quickly. I think we covered probably a little bit more in depth. Uh, last semester as well, but this is, I think, kind of the next step in that, where instead of just looking at this as maybe a rendering, but really starting to look in this market space, how much light might be penetrating deep enough to actually have this thing function. Uh, so, I don't know, Joy, do you have any suggestions on how we can pick the volunteers? Because um, there's 20, uh, I checked, there's 20 the the I already have, uh, I have five people that want to do that, I don't know if they'll find it. I already asked the every critic should email the individual section come up with 20 seconds. I mean, you've got three. Unless, would you be averse to doubling up? Like, I oh, no, that's fine, too. Could two students share a station? Sure. That is A-OK as, as a basic model. That's fine, too. If the worst kids want to do, why should we do it? No, no, no. So we can get 20 at a time, which we actually, we can get everybody in a different way. They want to So I, I think you should ask each yeah, we, I mean, it's almost everybody. We just have to structure. Right. Okay. Okay. So, does it, we, we probably have time for a couple of quick questions. I don't know if anybody has a couple of questions. I know I, I have probably one or two, but. Hit it. Uh, so, in the slide you showed uh, you said that on the cloud, you will you connect to the network and then it will show you where some of the. Yes. Uh, it works with wind in the same way it knows what wind patterns are what region. Exactly. Based on sort of the specifically where you are, it'll give you the wind rows, and then you'll be able to kind of, when you do the wind tunnel, be able to kind of adjust the wind so that the intensity and the primary direction really matches the site conditions. Okay. And if I uh, do, it would work if I just had a site and I wanted to do that. Oh, sure. No, it's the same basic thing. It'll, it's not as interesting about flowing around different things. But it's, uh, no, it, it is there. Yeah. So just in general, it, uh, sort of along those lines, as you prepare for like uh, like Wednesday, if you have some basic idea about the basic massing and how basic the, piece, uh, the pieces may fit together into a bigger set, that's good. If you sort of have an understanding of sort of where the open surfaces are, and even, oh, like what your conditions are going to be like, you know, for getting the light in. Are you going to have some sort of offset roof where there's some clear story windows? You're just going to have open sides? You know, sort of the better your model is. Okay, not down to the detail of all the walls, doors, and windows, but at least in terms of the basic forms and surfaces, you know, the more we'll be able to kind of show you in terms of getting out of that. And you could also, if we want to, we'll show you a little bit of how you can model a little bit of the site conditions. Are, are you on a this relatively flat site? Um, what we, what we resolve that? Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, we have it resolved. There, there's two different sites. Uh -huh. And one is, I would say, is relatively flat, and one has a little bit more typography. By the way, both of them are on the R drive in the research folder, both sites. And we decided to go from 0.25 meters, which we intervals, but they're both they've already been put up. Um, so there's two different sites. Fantastic. And that's what we should do. We have three sessions on Wednesday, right? Right. So we should maybe do the first session with everybody's on, anybody wants to go from site A. 
That, that's a really good idea. At least then, all the concerns are similar. Okay. Relative to the actually, one nice thing about that site is the first site looks like it's relatively flat, but it does have like a little bit of a mangrove that's kind of like the mm -hmm. Cool. It's interesting. It's not so great in terms of there's there's other tools that are better about that now because it's in, it, mm, just really un, well. Oh no, I take that back. That's there's another tool that we can get into called uh, computational fluid dynamics, which is just a, sort of a better job about how like the evaporative. Yeah, kind of blowing across the lake actually is very, very helpful. And is that built in deep that too, or? No, it's, it's really a, it's a separate piece in there. But that's it. People want to go down that path, we can like show you how to get down there too. If I could start design mode today, yes. and so I think it's going to be very basic. You're going to have to pay attention to how to mass lakes. Yeah. Super. But it's mostly open air structure. Sure. Um, there's only one of the bonds that are actually in the lake. So you're going to have to have everything else is very open. Cool. So that's kind of so I, I, I'm sort of looking forward to because it's kind of a neat challenge. It's a little bit different than we usually uh, do. Yeah, and I think they, they, it's just such a different climate that just seeing it will be very good to see it on a model like that. They're not exactly like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, I'll show you how we can model that. It's just basically you're drawing the box as opposed to letting it generate the box. Okay. Okay. okay so there's a yeah. It's one of those things. But sorry, it's so easy on the one hand, and it seems to do so much. But there's a couple tricks to get it to sort of jump through hoops the way you want it to. Right. right? And I think that's probably where I mean. We went over all, some of the basics, and I think we kind of hit the wall there with, yeah. with the, the, like not getting beyond those kinds of tricks. Sure. So. So, so, so bring some of those walls you've hit, because that's <laughs> really, I'm, I'm good for trying to like uh, help you work through some of those things. OK, uh, very good. Thank you, Glenn. Well, my pleasure. I, hope, hey, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. OK, so I will email you.